Hello, this is the Captain Paxo, and this is my Forgotten King boss guide for Salt and Sanctuary. You might be wondering what I'm doing here. I'm using the Mending Band to give my health back after the mandatory full damage, well, near mandatory full damage, on the run back of this boss, because I do not want to be fighting this boss with half health. Even though I have base health, uh, full health, well, near full health, does help against this boss, because it doesn't... These three, they don't do huge amounts of damage on their own. Well, at least the knight and the king don't. But the judge is the one you want to worry about. When he waves those runes in the air and they charge forwards, they're really, really difficult to dodge. Um, I can recommend trying to lure them away and then jumping over them as I did just there. They do have limited range. Um, and you can bait the judge to go back and forth, which is what I do throughout the entirety of this uh, video. I just bait him to turn, go to the other side, run back to the other side, um, do like a drive-by hit, and just rinse and repeat. That runes, those runes though, they one-shot me if they get a clean hit on me. It's really not good. The knight is by far the weakest out of the three. His attacks are very very telegraphed. Even his one where he's blocking with his sword, um, if you hit him, if you hit his sword and he kind of like, uh, he'll thrust, he sometimes thrusts his sword forwards, but it's really easy to avoid. And especially if you've got the judge still hanging around, you don't want to stay in one place for too long because he will get you. And I definitely recommend prioritizing the judge because he is definitively the most dangerous one of the three. Once you take him out, the other two are not that bad. The king has only really two moves. He has this leap forward like that, which he just did, which has decent range, but it's really easy to avoid. His dangerous attack is the one where he kicks you, because it comes out super fast and it'll knock you on your ass every single time. Well, all of these attacks do, and I'm getting beat up pretty bad here. I got lucky right there. No word of a lie, I got lucky. You know, the invincibility of me being knocked down saved me from those runes. I don't recommend that as a reliable strategy. What I do recommend is just ignoring the knight and the king, running from side to side, and baiting the judge to come near you so you can get a, a quick single swing at him and then run to the other side. Just keep doing that over and over because this is not a fun boss to have to do the run back for really isn't. Actually, this is kind of a, a long video, so let me talk about the run back. You have to run past two Grave Walkers, which on this character can one-shot me with their stupid RNG spell bullcrap, and then you gotta do like a load of kinda difficult jumps, some very precise jumps, and some that almost require you to take full damage unless you really know what you're doing. It's not fun at all. I spent more time doing the run back to this boss than actually fighting it. Word to the wise, actually, um, as you're doing these run backs, like back and forth to either side of the arena, you can take pot shots at the uh, the other forgotten ones because it'll lower their health and it means you won't have to deal with them for nearly as long. But prioritizing the judge is number one because he's the most lethal. As soon as you take him out, like I said, they're, they're kind of a joke. And honestly, the judge takes the most amount of damage, I believe. Like, the knight, I seem to remember the knight taking not, not much to get him down low, but the judge just seemed to take forever. But the judge is almost down, I just need to hit him one more time. There we go. He's down. I'm rather happy with him myself, because that's the first time I managed to beat him. And now it's a pretty... Pretty simple cakewalk, because like I said, their moves are quite telegraphed apart from that kick. But you can you can tell when that kick's coming, he'll raise his foot, and as soon as he raises his foot, roll through him. It's the same for all of their attacks. Right here I'm trying to bait out their jump attacks because it's got the most recovery out of all of them. And if like there, if I can just about use the range of my weapon to my advantage, I can't get kicked. Right there you saw he, the knight blocking my attack and then doing the, uh, the shove. Very well telegraphed. So if you just hit his sword, it does take reduced damage, um, but you are doing some damage and you're not getting hit in return. So again, just 
baiting out that jump attack, doing the whole run back and forth from either side of the arena, trying to separate them, really. Because, well, sometimes trying to separate them, sometimes trying to clump them together, because if you can clump them together and they both do the same jump attack, then you can hit them both. But at the same time, uh, they could mix up their timings of their attacks, and it could make it a, l a little bit dangerous. That was lucky, I should have rolled there. To be honest, I should be rolling a lot. They can't do damage when they're leaping into the air. But just to be uh, on the safe side, because, like I said, the run back to this boss is an absolute bitch. Easily the worst run back in the entire game. But this is game over at this point, we just got to wait for the king to do one more jump attack, and that's him dead. So, thank you very much for watching, I really hope this helped, because this is a pain in the ass boss simply because of the run back. And I will catch you next time.